Hi, this is a lecture video on right hand rules. I want you to use this lecture as an opportunity to highlight the conceptual ideas behind the right hand rule procedures. So the right hand rule is what you use when you want to associate a direction with a plane, with a planar quantity if you want to associate a vector like a direction. Let me demonstrate what I mean by using this 3D design software, Autodesk Fusion 360. So let me uh, draw a planar object first. I'm going to create a plane out of this object. So I have this planar object. And let's say I want it to describe its direction. I could do it by what plane it's on. Um, here you can see that it's on that XZ plane. But um, for an arbitrary direction of the plane, that becomes not possible. So the right-hand rule is what we use to specify that direction of the plane. Now, you might remember from your geometry that when you have a plane, there is an actually a unique direction that you can associate with that plane. And that unique direction can be described by a line perpendicular to the plane. Now, I have this little circle in the middle of the plane, and I can use this to show what perpendicular to the plane looks like. This is perpendicular to the plane. And as I rotate around, you can kind of see what it looks like. That hopefully fits with what you thought of as being perpendicular. Now, if we simply say, we associate the direction of the plane with the direction that's perpendicular to the plane that rules out an infinite number of possibilities that we had before. But it doesn't go quite far enough because when you are talking about perpendicular directions, there's this upward direction and there can also be this downward direction. And in some applications, you won't care. And that's the cases you saw in geometry. In geometry, if you have a plane, you can just associate a line with it. Line doesn't have a sense of direction. I mean, not up and down direction. Line just marks that axis. And you are done. Now, often in physics, you do care about that up or down direction. That's what vectors are. It's an arrow. So we need a rule to distinguish between these two directions. And that's where we introduce right-hand rule. Right-hand rule allows you to pick out between two perpendicular directions of the plane. Um, should it be one that's perpendicular in one way or one that's perpendicular in another way? And as long as we are consistent about it, we could have chosen one set of rules or the other set of rules, and both would have been fine, as long as we are consistent about it. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, we could have used the left-hand rules and formulate all of physics that way, and that would have been perfectly fine, but 90% of us are right-handed, so right hand is easier for 90% of us. So that's why we use right-hand rule to enforce one consistent set of rules, so that when we talk about, for example, direction of magnetic field, that um, we all have the same direction in mind, given the electric current that produces that magnetic field. So let's go over some of the right hand rules you have in the textbook and see how using the right hand applies to give one unique direction out of these two potential perpendicular directions that could have been chosen. So this is the first right-hand rule that's in the textbook. And here you can look at the vector V, the velocity vector, and the vector B, the magnetic field vector. And these two vectors, they define a plane. And that's the plane that you see drawn on this diagram here. And for the purpose of our discussion, let's say this plane is the plane of the screen. Um, the drawing is drawn in a perspective view, but let's say this is the plane of the screen. Then what the right hand rule says is, well, you align your hand 
So um, when you look at the textbook, the force is given as the charge times V cross product with B. Here the order matters. V is the first vector, B is the second vector. So you, if you have a plane defined that way using two vectors, one first vector and another second vector, then what the right hand rule in the textbook says is take your right hand, align the thumb of your right hand so that the thumb points in the direction of the first vector, then orient to your hand so that the rest of your four fingers or are oriented in the direction of the second vector, then the direction your palm points out in, as if you're pushing in the, that direction, that direction is the direction that you want to associate with that plane. So V cross B is the, or Q times V cross B is equal to force, the direction of force vector F. So that's the right hand rule. By the way, this isn't the right hand rule that I learned when I was in school. I learned a different one. Let me just quickly show those two in case you see them as you're looking at different books. The common one that you might see in different books is the three finger version. Now, I actually don't like this one and you will never see me use it, but I will just uh, use it this once to demonstrate it. Um, so these three fingers represent the direction of the three vectors. These two will be the vectors you use to define the plane, and this will be the direction you associate the plane with. So this finger, index finger, you let it point in the direction of the first vector, and the middle finger, you let it point in the direction of the second vector, B, so that's the, so I have this V and B in the plane of the screen that you see. Then the thumb points in the direction of the, uh, the third, the cross product, third vector, or the ve direction you associate with the plane. So it's pointing out of the screen, same as the one you saw. The one I personally use, the one I like, it's a whole hand version. And you will see why I like this one when we get to the shortcut uh, right hand rules um, in the next to two screens. So in this one, I orient my hand first in the direction of the first vector. So in that case, in the direction of V. And then I orient my hand until I can bend my fingers in the direction of the second vector. That would be B, which is pointing up in the plane of the screen. So, okay, I have to orient my hand this way. Then I can bend my fingers from the first vector V to the second vector B. So that's, uh, that's um, what you see, V cross B. Or these two directions are the directions that, these two vectors are the vectors that define the plane. And my thumb points in the direction of F or the, um, the direction that we want to associate the plane with. V cross B is equal to F. So these are the, um, some versions of right-hand rules. The version in your textbook is perfectly fine. It's great. It, in fact, highlights the fact that you are associating a plane with a vector. So I think in that sense, it's uh, conceptually an excellent one to use. Just make sure that you use your right hand. Don't use your left hand because your left hand, it's called the right hand rule. So both of these two directions could have been equally good. Direction that points out of the screen versus direction that points into the screen could have been equally good. The only thing is we had to be consistent. And since 90% of us are right-handed, we are choosing the right hand to let us be consistent um, with that one convention we have chosen. So that's the first right-hand rule. I would say this is the fundamental, elementary, basic right-hand rule. The rest are kind of a shortcut right-hand rule that kind of bypasses all the complicated math that um, we might do in a more mathematically based physics class. So let me show you those two shortcut rules that could be very useful. 
So here's one shortcut rule. This is probably the most applicable, useful one. It associates the direction of current with the magnetic field that's generated by the current. So this is the physical picture that you have. Current flows in one direction and that generates magnetic field that's going in concentric circles around the current. And um, so if you position yourself so that you look at current that's coming towards you, you would see those magnetic fields going counterclockwise. That's what you would see. And the shortcut rule that you can use to help you remember that is this one. So you use your right hand. Once again, it's a right hand rule, not left hand rule. You direct, point your thumb in the direction of the current. Then what the right hand rule says is that the direction that your fingers curl in, that's the direction that those circular magnetic fields curl in. So if you look at this thumb from above, then the fingers will look like they're curling in the counterclockwise direction. And that's what that picture is showing that um, with the, fing the thumb pointing in the direction of current, the direction the fingers curl in is the direction of magnetic field. Now, you can arrange electrical currents in different geometric arrangements to produce a more useful magnetic field than the ones going in circles. That's where you see the other shortcut right hand rule. So, I don't think your textbook explicitly gives you this as a shortcut right hand rule. So um, let me just point out the connection. So the first thing you do is you use the right hand rule that you, we went over just now. You point your thumb in the direction of current. Then the direction your fingers curl in is the direction of magnetic field. So when you do it at the locations shown in the picture, um, you know, in the far part of the segment, on the right side of the segment and then on the close eh, close side of the segment then what you see is that inside the loop the magnetic field all points up and that's what the diagram here shows and that's what the diagram here shows and now this is the shortcut loop rule I like to use in a circumstance like this you say well I am going to use my right hand I recognize that the currents are going in circles, so I'm going to use my fingers to go in that circular direction. Then the magnetic field inside the loop, which is mostly straight, as you can see here, that straight magnetic field goes in the direction of the thumb. So these currents, they are oriented in such a way that if you look from above, the current is going counterclockwise, so you let your fingers curl in counterclockwise direction, the magnetic field is coming towards you, pointing up. If the current was going in the other direction, then you orient your hand so that the current goes clockwise and magnetic field will point away from you. So that's the right hand rule. It's a, a way to use your body part <laughs> to remember which convention that 100% of physicists, even the left-handed ones, agree to go with. So for the purpose of our class, Physics 10, you will see in your homework that this right-hand rule is not hugely emphasized. It's because, you know, it's complicated. We really stop at the conceptual level of when you look at uh, magnetic force, for example, that the magnetic force is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the velocity of the charged particle. That's the main point that I want you to get. But some of you are going on to next level of physics, the ones that are more mathematically based. There, you will have to master this right hand rule to do magnetism correctly. So, so that's what the, this lecture is for. I think I have one application of this right hand rule with actual physical demos. So um, watch out for that video. Until next time, bye.